So if the Panthers don't emerge from round one or two with a quarterback, could they trade for one of the two big names we've had our eyes on for the past several weeks, Baker Mayfield of the Browns, Jimmy Garoppolo of the 49ers. Fitter addressed that yesterday. Here's what he had to say. Now we're going to get through the draft this weekend and see what happens. Um, you know, we do have options outside of the draft. Uh, we like guys in the draft. So we'll just see how it plays out, um, and we'll make the best decision for this team uh, over the next, you know, couple weeks. Why are some quarterbacks available that are out on the market? You have to ask yourself that. So, um, you know, obviously every time you draft a quarterback, you, you know, ideally you want them through the draft. But uh, however we get them, however, whatever it takes to get them in the door here, we'll, once we get them, we'll work with them and develop them. And that's, uh, that's just kind of the process that we'll go about. Why are some quarterbacks available that are on the market? There are Panthers fans saying, hey, Scott, why didn't you think of that last year before you gave up a second-round pick and a third-round pick for Sam Darnold? Come on. Come on, man. So, But that is a cautionary tale for everyone. Just because a guy is available, yeah. there is a red right. flag there. Right. Teams don't move on from quarterbacks that are going to become franchise guys and cornerstones of the team for years to come. So you do have to ask yourself, do I take someone else's reject or do I go out and roll the dice on someone who's completely unproven? But as you've said, I think you've said this, Baker Mayfield is the best quarterback in this draft class. That if you're going to to go after a quarterback, don't draft one of these guys, go get Baker Mayfield. Did well, you say that? I did, did not somebody say, else that. say that. I did not say that. Yeah, that was somebody else. Somebody else said but that. But I, I mean, right. I, I understand that logic there. I do. I mean, yeah. You know, the uh, all these guys, he's, Baker Mayfield's, you know, arm is better than Kenny Pickett. You know, does he have maybe some of the high end attributes that Corral and Willis have? I don't know. They have some things that, you know, their ultimate ceiling, if they could reach it, could be greater than Baker Mayfield, in my opinion. It can. But, you know, we know Baker Mayfield's got some, there's some stuff about him talent on the field and a little pizzazz off the field, too, that can be a good or bad thing. And you just got to measure that. So, yeah, we'll see how it plays out. But Carolina with no second, third round pick. You know, if they don't take that quarterback at six, all right, so now they trade down, you know, maybe what? So they trade down to the mid-teens. They going to take a quarterback there? I don't know. I still don't really believe it. I don't. Um, I, I think this is all a ruse by them. I just don't imagine them being in the, the quarterback market, you know, in the first round at least. It is very possible to talk yourself into the glass being more than half full on Baker Mayfield when you consider sure. he spent four years with one of the most dysfunctional franchises over the past 20 years in the NFL, a year with Hugh Jackson, a year with Freddie Kitchens as the head coach. Well, it was Hugh Jackson, and then it was Greg Williams after Hugh Jackson got fired, and Baker Mayfield actually played pretty well that year. Yeah, he despite did. Despite all the crap going on in Cleveland. Right. Then they hire the guy they never should have hired to be the head coach. He regresses. Then first year with Kevin Stefanski, he's as good as he's ever been. And then last year he gets injured week two, and it falls apart. I mean, there's enough there. If you're looking for Definitely. silver lining, it's thick, it's prominent, and you can talk yourself into Baker Mayfield. You really can. If you factor in the reality that he played for a crap organization, all due respect, too late for that. But that's the way the Browns had been. They're getting better. They are getting better. Yeah, don't definitely don't, are. Don't go crazy. Yeah, Browns fans, they are getting better, and you should be happy about that. But three, four years ago, it was as bad as it could be, and he still thrived, relatively speaking, in that environment. Yeah. So that that's look, I hear I, you. I, I I don't know what's going to happen because it's a complicated situation for the Browns. How much are they going to pay? How much is someone else going to pay? What draft pick are you going to give up? Are you comfortable bringing this guy in on a one-year deal? Are you comfortable with his personality? Having enough time to do all the work on it? You go back and look at your reports and scouting on him from four years ago. If it was easy, he would already be traded. And I think anyone who's looking for a quarterback now wants to see what happens round one and or round two of the draft before calling a shot on Baker Mayfield. I, I, I think you're right there. I, I, let, let, let's see how it goes. Let's see how it falls. You know, maybe, maybe they're one of these teams that's got, you know, a pretty high grade on a guy like Desmond Ritter or Howell from North Carolina to where they think, oh, maybe they'll be sitting there in the third round and we'll use some of our picks to get back into the third round to make a pick. I mean, they certainly can make those type of moves if that's if that's there. The Baker Mayfield thing, Mike, I think you bring a lot of points. I think, you know, with Baker, yeah, there's some excitement about what he can do on the field. If, if I'm a, a team, there is. 
They're just there's this the trepidation of wait. I mean, Cleveland seemed to want to get rid of them pretty fast. And, you know, the things we've brought up over the last few weeks, we've still yet to hear anybody from the Cleveland Browns football team really stick up for Baker Mayfield over the last year and a half. So that's weird. So I think those questions are out there in the NFL a little bit. Like, you know, yeah, we think he's going to be good in the locker room, but we've heard a few stories about the damn guy, and we're not sure. And then Jimmy Garoppolo you know, at, you know, the big thing there is the same thing we talk about. You know, it's just it's going to be hard because everybody's going to go, but wait, I mean, okay, he's pretty good on film, okay, but they all they want to do is get rid of him for three years. So why would I want him? It's been three years of just trying to get rid of this guy. And that people question that too. And then they get in to start digging into what's the guy like off the field and all that stuff, and you start to hear that stuff too. And I think that – you know, can hurt both of these guys a little bit in that department. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.